Let's create some primary walls in sheet metal using the two most common options, planar and extrude. To create my sheet metal part, I'll click on the new icon or you could use control N and I'm going to change the subtype to sheet metal. For the sake of this demo, I'm not going to change the name, but I will show you that if you uncheck use default template, that'll allow you to change what you're using as your start part. I'll click OK. And that takes me into sheet metal mode. If you look at the ribbon, you'll notice that most of the icons are grayed out because you have to create a primary wall in order to use many of the other different operations that allow you to create secondary walls or rips or forms or other kinds of bends and other sheet metal features. And most people use internal sketches, that's perfectly fine. I prefer to use external sketches, so I'm going to click on the sketch tool first. And I'm going to locate my sketch on the datum plane called top. Click the sketch button to get into Sketcher. For creating your shape, a lot of times you start off with a rectangular shape. And so I could use the regular corner rectangle tool. A lot of times I use that if I know what I'm going to I have for my set datums what sides of the part that I want to use. So I could go and say, hey, let's go ahead and locate it as such. And this would allow me to use the datum plane called right as one of my datums and the datum plane called front as another one of my datums for inspection and measurement later on. But you're not always going to do that. Maybe if you have symmetry, you want to use the center rectangle tool. And I'll locate the center and drag out the approximate shape of my primary wall. Let's go and change some of these dimensions. I'm in inches, so maybe I want 12 inches on that side and 18 inches on this side over here. Then to complete the sketch, you can hit the green check mark. You can also hold down the right mouse button and from the pop-up menu, you can get to the same command. Let's turn off our datum visibility. And so I've got my sketch over here with a sketch selected. I can use the planar tool. And one of the most important things here when you're creating the primary wall is that you're going to have the thickness defined on the dashboard. Maybe I'm going to use a very thick eighth inch. And this is important because this drives the thickness of all the subsequent walls in your model. If you take a look at the References tab, there's really nothing much here except if you are using an external sketch, you're able to break that dependency. From the Properties tab, you can change the name of the feature, but I'm happy with this, so I'll click the check mark, and my first planar wall is created. If you take a look at it in the model tree, it even indicates that it is the first wall. All right, let's delete that and show the other method. And actually, I'm going to create a new part for doing this. So let's say I create a new part and I forget to change the subtype. Maybe it slips my mind. I'm working a little too fast. I'm using my default template. I'll click OK. And all of a sudden I realize, oh, wait, I'm in standard part mode. I want to create a sheet metal part. If this ever happens to you, you can go to the Operations drop-down menu and choose Convert to Sheet Metal. And since I didn't have any other geometry in my model when I chose that operation, I don't have to do any kind of conversion. Okay, for this, again, I like to create my sketches first. Uh, I'm going to do an extrude wall this time. So let's choose the Sketch tool. And I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called Front. Click on the sketch button and let's use the icon to change to our 2D orientation. And again, I'm just going to make basically a channel and I could sketch three lines and I could locate it over here like such. If I wanted to use, say, the datum plane call right as one of my datums later on for measuring. But again, if I know that I have symmetry in my model, I can take advantage of that. And so for symmetry, let's sketch in a center line, a vertical center line. Let me turn off my datum display to reduce my screen clutter. By throwing in a center line first, 
when I go to sketch a line, it'll snap to that when I get to the other side. And that way I can have a single dimension over here for controlling the width of it. Let's zoom in. And then I'm going to have two vertical lines. So let's create one over here and another one over on the other side. And I didn't get equal length, no problem. We can use the equal constraint and then pick both of the lines. And for the height of this, let's make this an inch and a half. Oops, let's double click on it. Let's get out of the tool that we were in. Now double click on it and change the value. If you're ever in some kind of operation in sketch mode and you want to get out of whatever current tool you're in, just hit the middle mouse button a couple of times. And right now I have three straight lines and that's okay because I'll show you an option that you have on the extrude tool. So I'll click the check mark to get out of Sketcher. Let's just reorient it slightly. And now when I click on the extrude tool, I can drag out the depth of this. I can even flip the direction. Maybe I want it going in the other side. And let's make this length of about 10 inches. Now again, right now I have sharp corners and that's not realistic to how metal behaves in the real world. Uh, so if I go to the options tab over here, oh, right now it's generated as surface. Let's extrude this as a wall and specify our thickness. And right now it's adding to the inside and it automatically checks an option to add bends on sharp edges. And it's using for the bend radius, the thickness of the part. If you go to the drop down list when the other default values is two times the thickness, or you could specify what you want to use. Maybe I want to use a half inch and it's measuring that to the inside, which is a lot of times what you're going to use. Measure to the inside because that's how a lot of the different bending tools work. And just like before when I did the extrude wall, here I have the thickness and that's going to drive the thickness of all the other subsequent walls in my model. Just like with the other uh, extrude tool in standard mode, you can use a symmetric depth or use two reference. The placement tab, just like with the planar tool, just has the sketch, and if you have an external sketch, the ability to unlink it. There is a bend allowance tab. A lot of times you're going to use the standard part bend allowance for calculating the developed lengths of your models, but if you're not a sheet metal manufacturer, a lot of times you don't have to deal with that at all. You provide the sheet metal manufacturer with your part in the fully formed state and let them figure out based on their materials and their machines what length is needed in the blank in order to create the fully formed geometry. And from the properties tab like before I can change the name of the feature. I'll hit the check mark to complete it. And there I have extrude one my first wall created in the model. So there you see how to use both the planar tool and the extrude tool for creating primary walls in a sheet metal part. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to be informed when new videos are created, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much.